I grew up right outside of DC in this little suburb. I uh, go to Calvert County. I went to this Huntington High School. It was like this nice little high school. We're right off like Chesapeake Bay, so it's kind of sick. Tran I, that was like, it took a semester off and then transferred to MTSU January 2018. January 2018, you came to MTSU. Why MTSU? <laughs> Bro, I got in state tuition there. Oh, so they have yeah. the best music business department in the whole entire nation. Like them and Belmont kind of go back and forth, number one, number two. Mm -hmm. And I got in-state tuition at MTSU because the state of Maryland doesn't offer music business anywhere. So they pay the difference. So I said, yo, I'm going to MTSU. <laughs> oh, okay, sweet. So you went there for music business? Yes. Okay, sick. So what was the plan, music business? Oh, bro, I was a classically trained singer my whole life. No, it Classically trained singer. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was like, I have like songs on iTunes and stuff like that from when I was a kid. It was like kind of crazy. But I wanted, I was like, I want to go down there with the big, big artists, all sorts of stuff like that. That was like my goal to come down here and just be this big celebrity. And then as I learned no. about, as I learned about the industry, I was like, eh. I'm good. How did so? How did you think that music business was going to help you blow up, be an artist? Oh, that? I just wanted the connections, bro. Like I, I, I wanted to learn about it. Obviously, I've always been interested in like the legal side of it. Mm. I wanted the connections a lot, though. So I was like, as I kind of go there, and make these connections, meet other musicians, I kind of use that, leverage it, and then put myself out there, and then decide not to. <laughs> oh, so you didn't, you didn't finish, did you? I finished school. I oh, you did. I graduated early. Oh, sure. Yeah, I'm the slow one. Okay. <laughs> how many total? How many total years were you there? So I started January 2018, and mm. I finished December 2020. That's like two years, um, or like two and a half, or something. Yeah, I got a lot of credit in high school. I did. I did community oh. college in high school. So I oh, you're doing like dual credit. enrollment. Yeah. AP classes and shit. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. That's incredible. Yeah, it took me um it took me four years and a summer. But <laughs> like at MTSU they they have you you know how gen eds work. Somehow I ended up taking beginning bowling and racquetball and like indoor soccer. Like these are all classes. Like I was getting grades for. And like I took intro to dance. I took intro to theater. I took intro to American politics. I was trying to get a journalism degree. <laughs> <laughs> and MTSU was like, no, 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 just get more credits. Just get more credits. Gen Eds, Gen Eds, Gen Eds. I took to like two history classes, geology, like all this shit that doesn't matter. But you didn't have to do any of that. No. You went I, straight into the music business show. Well, so. kind of, I tested out of the Gen Eds that I did. Uh, you are a model for like what college should be. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, like, I, like you, you, you got through it like, so quickly and easily. Everybody else is like miserable, but your overall college experience, it wasn't too depressing, right? Oh, bro, I loved college. I mean, you, you saw me. It you, seemed like you were having fun. Hey, you seen my stuff. I, you know, I, I was having a blast. Blackout Wednesday. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful time. <laughs> Yeah, I'm uh, I'm really glad that you brought that up. So the fraternity, I know that you went to college, music business, because you were trying to make connections. Was joining the fraternity just about like networking or were you like, oh my God, brotherhood? Bro, no. So <laughs> I transferred to a school in Tennessee. Where, first of all, I was terrified moving down here, bro. Mm -hmm. All my friends back home were like telling me that I was going to like meet clan members, like all sorts of stuff like that. <laughs> Like I was, no, that, that was like a genuine fear of mine. All my friends were like, yo, have fun in Tennessee. When I first moved down here, my dad told me that if I'd not owned cowboy boots, I wouldn't have any friends. Like, yeah, it's no just friends. not, it's so weird that people have that perspective of Tennessee because I've been in Tennessee my whole life. And it's like, yeah, there are some racist people, there are some cowboys, but like, it's not that deep. Oh no, bro, like, I thought this whole deep. entire thing, pretty much the crowd at Whiskey Dicks is what I envisioned. You thought that was the whole, that was the whole state? <laughs> flag tattoos, cowboy <laughs> boots, knowing how, I didn't even know line dancing was a thing besides like the Cupid Shuffle until I moved here. I didn't know that line dancing was a thing either until I went to college and then I went to Whiskey Dicks. Whiskey Dicks is the bane of my existence. Oh, I, God, I, th yeah. I don't think there's anything good about that place. I can't name one thing. No. I can't name one thing. I just know some, oh, some giant there slapped my girlfriend. Some that was the last time I went there, and and yeah, and she, and she was she was telling me about it, and I was like, yeah, I I don't see like he was too big, he was too big for me to do anything about. So I was just like, I don't I don't see him, I don't I don't I don't know who you're talking about. And she was like, yeah, it's that guy right over there, and I was like, no, no, I don't see him, I don't know who you're talking about. Let's just leave and never come back. So that's my experience. <laughs> Whiskey Dicks is going to sue me for slander. I don't care. The number one defense against slander and defamation is the truth. I never tell a lie. So um, so the fraternity. What was your experience like that? How did you get in? Who brought you in? Well, that was the thing, bro. Well, for Daniel brought me in. because I, I, But I didn't have any friends. Like, where I was going I had no <laughs> friends when I first moved there. I transferred in the middle of the spring. I didn't have, like, a customs. And my roommate was, like, never home. So mm -hmm. like, I had, like, some, like, random kid from, like, I don't even know. Some, like, town in Tennessee. And he was dating some girl there. So he'd always leave. He was fine, but like he was—he was like I never knew him, and all the kids on my floor were weird. Oh, you lived on campus, bro. I lived in Deer Hall, which was like Ew. the grossest dorm. You, it was terrible. 
It yeah. was terrible. But then, uh, so I went to like the little uh, IFC night or whatever. Mm -hmm. I got there super, super late. And there were like two Good. people left. And the only people who even like, do document was like Daniel mm -hmm. and like Brian and like Logan and all them were there. Sweet. And then I, I, like, no, for, I'm a very social person if you didn't yeah. know. But yeah. like, uh, and then they're like, oh, come get a burger with us afterward. I was like, oh, bet. Like, I, I, that's safe. I have things to do. Yeah. And that's how I kind of got into it. Like, after that, they just text me and invite me all the time. And I was like, yeah. Like, I, again, nothing else to do like I, I i had nothing else to do so yeah I'm, I'm always interested to know like um eventually at some point i'll get as many people from our fraternity on as possible i'm always interested to know the um the path that people took to get on it because for me coming into college i knew everybody has the stereotype of like what they think fraternities and sororities are like and i was like mm, um no they're mm, that's a lot it's weird it seems kind of cultish i don't really want to get involved but then my friend jordan who's like a huge introvert you remember him yeah like he i'm like if he is joining and like they're not bullying the hell out of him i joined and it was a little bit of what i expected but also a lot of it not being because like yes we drank as much as you'd expect a fraternity too we party as much as you expect a fraternity too but like parties are like once a week and then outside of that we're just kicking it it's super chill stuff until you know the <laughs> <laughs> until blackout wednesday <laughs> oh, so God. yeah um <laughs> i'm so glad that you brought that up because like the awesome thing about this is hearing things from a different person's perspective it's like there was a point where when i was about to leave when exactly did you join because i feel like we were like a year or two off separate so i joined like, my first semester i joined like spring semester of 2018 when i first came to mtsu Gotcha. Okay. All right. It's it's all coming back to me now because I graduated in August of 2018. So the same year you were getting in is the same year I was getting out. Yeah. So that's why like what you were doing, like the culture you were promoting in the fraternity, I was like, this feels different. Like it's hype. Like I love it, but it's a lot. But luckily I'm leaving, but you didn't stop going hard. What was your role in the fraternity? Like, what did you feel like your mission was? See, that's the thing, bro. I I wasn't even like thinking about the fraternity when I was doing a lot of stuff. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously I was like, I was like holding exec board positions, stuff like that. So like, obviously mm -hmm. I cared about it, but that I wanted to have a good time. Like my whole exactly. thing, my, yeah. my whole entire life, I'm like, yo, I'm gonna have fun no matter where I am, no matter what I'm doing. And that's why I was so, even like with like the Mr. Alpha Kai stuff, going through and doing that, also just like all different like social events, homecoming. I mm. actually wanted to have fun. I didn't yeah. care who came with me. I didn't care what happened. I was, even if I, it was me, when Black Eyed Wednesday started, it was me and two people I worked with right. getting drunk on a Wednesday for no reason. <laughs> Had nothing to do with Greek life or anything no, like that. No, just two people who I work with. Puck it. <laughs> so, so I think the, the issue that, I don't know if you ever actually cared, and I'd, I'd never give a I was like, oh my God, he's drinking on Wednesday. Ooh, like we do that anyways, who cares? Oh, yeah. So like, but there was a point when I was getting out of it and you were just getting started that people were like, does Aaron understand that what he's doing is like a referendum on the fraternity. Like he, like I know that when you're doing it, you're like, oh, I'm just doing my own thing. But if you have a party and you are in the fraternity, people are going to assume that that's a fraternity party thing. Oh, I did, did, assume. Did, did that ever occur to you? Or were you just like, I'm just doing my own thing. Who cares? It doesn't matter. I did not care. Like, I mean, not <laughs> big a day. Like, I did not care. No, like, it's, it's okay to not care. Oh, I don't, but let's think, bro. It's like, you know, at the end of the day, <laughs> if I'm paying to be in something, I moved out of my parents' house and I have rules. The last thing I'm going to do is let my literal peers yeah. tell me what I can and can't do. It's a weird dynamic. Like, I got to that point, too. God, there was this, um, there was this one night. I don't know if you were a part of it or not, but like... We were, it was either the night before initiation or some like rehearsal thing or whatever. And we had like a break. And during that break, like me and a couple of the other brothers like went down the street to like a bar, and, like did shots and came back. And like, I just remember being like lectured about that. Like they were so angry at me. And I, I think that was with, like my initiation. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. See, <laughs> see, so that shows just how much we care about you. So, like, why would you care about? <laughs> why would you care about the rules that we're trying to get you to follow when we're like getting drunk on your initiation night? So, I think maybe you didn't have the best example coming in. So, why would we expect you to act differently than we are? Maybe that's why they were so upset with me. But again, like, I'm not trying to get lectured by people that are literally my age, like my exactly. size. Like, bro, stop telling me what to do. Like, you're what not you better for? than me. Like, you're yeah. paying for it. I'm, I thought this is what we were supposed to do. There were times where even I took it too seriously. Every time you're like in a different phase of your life you look back and you're like bro everybody was being way too serious well that's the thing about life bro like there's not a single thing that needs to be like there are obviously some things that need to be taken seriously yeah i take very few things like that seriously like if you can't laugh at yourself and you can't laugh at a situation you're in whether it's a good situation or a bad situation you're gonna be miserable 
Yeah. Like, life is a mindset, bro. And if you want to take everything seriously, you're going to be upset. Because realistically, you can take things as serious as you want. But if other people don't take it seriously, they're just going to make fun of you. Like, exactly. Like, they're just be like, bro, like, my whole thing, when I was getting yelled at and everyone was, like, trying to get mad at me. And after me, <laughs> I was like, yeah, okay, are you done? And I was like, all right, are you done here? He was like, what are you actually going to, like, are you going to kick me out? Because, like, if this stuff, like, if you kick me out, I'm not going to just stop doing this stuff. Oh, bro, that's a whole, 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 whole nother story. <laughs> <laughs> were, 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 were you threatened with, like, punishment or... What, oh, what, yeah. what was that? Well, so you probably didn't hear about this. When I first, like, right after I moved out of the fraternity house, mm. I got in trouble because these little fight talk kids who hated me, hated me, mm. so, and they really reported me to Leslie <sighs> for a recruitment infraction because they took a picture in my house <laughs> with me and my, my, like, this kid lived right, he lived right next door to me. Mm. I literally met this kid in a Dollar General, and his parents <laughs> were like, hey, my son has no friends. Can mm. you please hang out with him? Like, because I was there with, like, Lydia and, like, David. And I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, sure. So I invited him over to the house. I was, I was just being nice to the kid. Like, he's my yeah. neighbor. You're just being, yeah, you they just t- live next to him. They yeah. took a picture because he's, like, not in Greek. He was, like, not in Greek life. Mm-hmm. And the flag was, like, in the back of the room. Oh. They took a picture, sent it to Leslie. And said I was dirty rushing. And we got, like, a fine or something like that. And I was like, yo, bro. I, I, I was like, that's not. I was like, they were like, well, you need to. I already reported to, um. To our nationals, like this, that, and the other, blah, 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 blah. They were going on oh, and on about how wrong I was, how I need to be ashamed of myself, all sorts of things. I was like, bro, yeah. I was not in the wrong for this. First of all, Greek life cannot have the control over me saying I can and can't have a drink with my neighbor. I was like, with that same logic, my roommate who's not Greek should not be in my house either. Yeah. I was like, and with that same, I said, there are two other people in two separate fraternities in this house as well. Why am I the only being singled out for it? So at the time, was it the house though? No. That's the beauty. Bro, it was a house on drive I, I, I said how is greek life coming into my own home yeah how can they come life? down on you that, that's what i said i was uh. like this doesn't even make any sense I'm like with this same logic there's eight kids in my house who aren't <laughs> there's five kids in my house who don't even go to mtsu are you gonna go ahead and call me out for every single one of them too? yeah it's like i i would have our fraternity flag like in our apartment and when people came over and drank and hung out or whatever most of the people that i hung out with were not greek by the way so exactly. so like are you really gonna hold us accountable for things that they're doing that like okay the flags in the background and like i to be fair like i would do my best to make sure if people are taking pictures in my apartment like maybe don't have our flag in the back of it like i'm usually aware of that but if somebody else took the picture and they were like purposely trying to like That's ruin your bro i wouldn't fought with us for that that I would do. Like, I, told her, I, I was like, bro, I was like, you're telling me right now people are coming into my house when I'm throwing a party, taking pictures of me and sending them to you multiple times. Cause uh, this happened three separate times. <laughs> and like, this, is after, this is after I was no longer getting She yeah. said, when I was president, bro, she sent an email to our national people. This is when we threw the Blackout Wednesday award show. <laughs> and, like, people, she said, people come in and take pictures, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Reporting me for saying that I'm promoting, like, dangerous behavior, all sorts of stuff like that. No, you're just a college student. She, just having fun. In my own house, she sent this nasty-ass email. To, <laughs> and, like, to the, like, the, um, like, stand, like, the national standards chair. And was going on and on about how I'm, like, a, this is dangerous. They didn't have a meeting about me. I am, like, a serious, like, bad representation on Greek life. Oh, bro, I went up there and I popped off. I said, bro, this is the third time I've been in this office. Yeah. Two of those times, I was no longer even Greek. I was no longer even Greek when I've been called in this office. Yeah, how are people trying to hold you accountable for the actions of, like, an organization when you're not even a part of it anymore? And that's the weird thing about being a part of a fraternity. It's like, at what point are you truly, like, dissociated? Because, oh, like, the second I graduated, they're like, you're not a anymore. But, well, it's like, not even just that, but it's like, bro, she said, her whole thing was like, well, you're a really public figure around campus, so what you do has more Oh, you're ways. a public figure. And I said, I, I said, how am I any more a public figure than every other attorney throwing parties over here? Exactly. I, I, I said, how is me throwing an award show with my friends that we just call Blackout Wednesday, and you're <laughs> so offended that we spray painted empty liquor bottles gold and made a whole show out of it. None of us were even drunk. I'm not. That's a lie. That's, <laughs> like, that, that's a lie. We were definitely, but like, nobody was like, passed out on the ground. And I was like, bro, how, I, like, what, what is the difference between me throwing an award show with my friends versus a sorority four more than have an award show where everyone's also plastered? Or it's like an entire barn full of underage people drinking. Like maybe we should, like, I think our, I think we're focused on the wrong issue. Oh bro, I, I pulled the race card. I told her, I, I said, Leslie, I said, the biggest difference right here is that I said, I said all these people throw these parts, I said, the other parties, people are reporting sexual assault, people are reporting all these different things. Mm-hmm. And I'm the one you're choosing to target and try to find, but I'm no longer even part of your part of your stipulation. Very interesting. I, 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 said, uh. I said, we're also the only organization with a black president, a black president. president is-
This is America. My president is black and my Lambo is blue, nigga. And if I see you in the street, I'm slapping the shit out of you. And I'm the only person of color who's been in this office for this exact reason. I, I, I said, that's not a coincidence. <laughs> looked at me like I had 15 heads going on. <coughs> bro, this woman looked like I was literally crazy. Did she back down? Oh, bro, never heard from you again. <laughs> <laughs> it's that easy. Never heard from her again. What's your relationship with the fraternity today? Do you hear from any of them? Do they have any idea what you're up to? Do you keep in contact at all? Oh, bro, yeah. All like the, all like the, because all the people now are all the people who like I recruited. You know what I mean? Like all the yeah. people now, are people who like were there with me during all of like beginning Blackout Wednesday stuff. Mm -hmm. We're coming out. Like I love those guys. It's like They're a whole great. saga. It's like your whole lore. I know. I'm like, bro. Oh my god. Like that's the thing. I think everyone. I'm like, bro. <laughs> my little like he's president now that's sick i'm proud of him doing his thing that's so cool I'm because like, i have no idea what's going on with him yeah bro I, feel like, I almost feel like a proud parent who's like watch these kids grow up and like now that i moved up here i see him whenever they come up they always text me when they're coming to nashville i'm like oh that's, I, I get you get so happy watch them do their thing it's actually incredible that you mentioned how like there was all these emails and these fines and these meetings that were about you yet now the person that is literally running that fraternity is only there because you brought them in so like how toxic were you really how big of a problem were you That's the actually thing, bro. It, it, everyone likes to get mad at they, everyone likes to blame issues on somebody everyone needs someone to blame exactly and i wasn't really taking anyone's shit yeah truthfully like i, I just and you shouldn't care. you shouldn't have like and i like i wish God, i wish i could have been more i wish i could have been more like you <laughs> when i was there because like i used to there was a period i mean when i was just about to graduate when i was just about to get out of it i was like i don't give a f what you guys think anymore but there there was a point where i was like god i don't want to get in trouble i don't want to have to go to standards i don't want to like i don't want us to get fined like oh, oh no t t take the flags down don't take any pictures of those i don't want people to think that this is a event and it's like it oh, doesn't I, it doesn't matter i lived in standards <laughs> I got called. A lot. I didn't go a lot. They did tell me you need to come. I'm like, no, I have other things to do. <laughs> I, I think it's. I think it's astonishing that like just. Oh my god, the things that they would claim they had the like ability to fine you for. I'm like, you're gonna ask for more money from me? Like, dog, we're all broke. Oh, bro, they were trying to find me $5,000. Oh. And I literally told my, I, I, I said, brother, I will get a lawyer involved. I, I, said, I, said, I, said, I said, first of all, I mean, I'm not even, I'm like, I'm not remotely scared of this. No. Whatsoever. I'm like, I think it was such a collections. I said, no, you won't. Wow. I, I, I said, if you, I said, if you want to go through this, I said, first of all, because they, with the whole thing, they accepted the fine. Mm. I was not allowed to go to my own hearing or defend myself because I, I knew I was right. I was not in the wrong there whatsoever. I was not allowed to go defend myself because nationals told them the best thing to do was to accept the fine mm. and grow from it. And I, I said, I, I said, I said <laughs> if nationals would you do that, the nationals could pay the fine. I said, because I would have won that case. Do you know I how know. ridiculous it is? Like, it never occurred to me when I was in it. Do you know how crazy it is to send your brother to collections? Like, have you considered, like, the mm. PR fallout from that? Like, you think, if you, if you send me, like, Derek, to collections for not paying my fraternity, I'm going to burn this to the ground like i will destroy this fraternity you honestly think you're gonna put me in that type of debt you're gonna fuck up my credit for life because of this like frat that's crazy i, I, I like, forgot entirely about that <laughs> i the, the amount of it oh, from the collections i said how much wrong with you like why is like, like your favorite thing to, like laugh at? like oh haha -ha, we're gonna send the collections oh they're gonna pay the whole thing it's like, but that's not really that funny. Like, you're fucking their whole life up. Yeah, that's like oh, we're, really. We're something that, they, they don't come to anything anyway. Fuck them. What's in your collection? It's like, bro, if they don't come to anything anyway, what? what? Bro, what? Bro, just, just, bro, just <laughs> let him, just let him leave. I, like, no. it's just, it's just a fraternity. Like, just let us go. Like, it's okay. You don't have to hold people for, like for ransom. <laughs> I know. It's like, bro, like I get it, but like, especially now that I'm like an adult, like making, like doing it. Three hundred dollars? That is not worth sending someone to collections for. It's yeah, yeah. Like, it's, it's not. You know, it's it's not one thing if someone's like there. If, if someone's like there trying to use all the benefits of it and they're not paying for anything, even then be like, bro, you can't keep coming to stuff. You're not gonna pay dues. Yeah, but that don't be like, I'm gonna send you to collections and try to like ruin your entire credit history. You're not gonna be able to get a house. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. College as a whole, I'm I'm curious to know, like when you were about to finish college. Did you have like a set plan like right after college? Did you oh, know what you were doing? No, no idea what you were doing. Hell no. <laughs> I I graduated in a pandemic, bro. I graduated. I finished my last semester oh. living up here in the middle of COVID stuff, and I was like, well, fuck. Now what? I literally was like, well, now what? I was with my parents freaking out because I had no idea what they were gonna do. I was gonna go to law school, and when I decided I didn't want to go to law school anymore, I was like, bro, no. Nah, I, I, I never would have known, Aaron. I, I never would have known you had this passion for law. I what, love what law. <laughs> That's why I knew I won my case. I was like, bro, like, I'm literally gonna go to law. I was like, I'm about to go to law school. I was like, bro, I have all this. I, I went through, I read the entire, like, 
ISC bylaws. All the bylaws. I had everything. <laughs> I had my whole argument written out. I was like, I'm not paying five thousand dollars. I, I was. I didn't want to like. Again, like those are your brothers. You don't want to fuck them over. Yeah, really but like they're trying to fuck you first. <laughs> Wesley, bro. But that's the thing. I don't even care about that. Like I, I just didn't want to like leave them screwed with the five thousand dollar fine. Yeah, yeah. And so I was gonna argue out of it. I was like, bro, I, we did not do anything wrong for the, for the betterment of all of us. Because like, let's say that this stuff actually goes through and they do like successfully find you. They're like, that's that's a terrible precedent. For all other brothers, current Most and future. Thing, even though I didn't like rock the people who were like running it at the time, mm -hmm. everyone else to my friend. You know what I mean? Like, I yeah. still, everyone else, those were all my friends. Like, I loved a lot of those kids. But I mean, I still do. I still care about those people a lot. But like, what I'm saying is, I did not want the journey, like to lose five thousand dollars over something I did. But when they just paid it anyway, wouldn't let me go defend myself. <laughs> I was like, bro. Oh, so it wasn't even that deep because yeah, you, yeah, you guys yeah. were gonna take care of it anyways. No, well, they were trying to tell me I owed them that money, and I said, brother, that's not what you're about to do. <laughs> I'm like, I, I, I'm not paying you anything. You came into college wanting to be um, big singer, classically trained. And oh God, I remember, dude, I'd never heard you sing before. <laughs> I never heard you sing before until Mr. Alpha Kai. And I was so f pissed because I was like, I'm going to go out here. I have this rap that I wrote. Where are all your fans now? Did they just walk out? So I'm sitting on my throne and I'm chilling in my pad and I'm all up in this beat. Can you feel it, Mr. Kraft? What's resistance? Killing these dudes without much resistance and I'm rhyming and I'm vibing without very much assistance. And it's going to be such a cool rap. Nobody's doing music like this. No one's going to see this shit coming. And then you go out there and start singing and literally like the second note you hit and when I heard those girls in the audience, I was like, <laughs> I think I lost. I think I lost this one. <laughs> He hadn't finished the first verse and like my my girlfriend at the time was out in the audience and I like I was literally like texting her like while you were singing I'm like it's not that good is it how, how are, is, is it as good as it sounds how are the girls looking out there and she was like I think you lost babe <laughs> I was like, oh, no so obviously being a talented singer coming out of college without a plan are you still trying to be that or like is the end goal to be a musician or is it now more TikTok, instagram influencing social media like what's what's the plan now i enjoy singing a lot i enjoy making music a lot the last thing that i want to do especially as i learn more and more of the industry i don't want to use something i'm passionate about to make money where i'm becoming less passionate about it i right. enjoy doing it. i like to do it for fun from all these primitive stories, as you can tell, I hate being told what to do. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I almost have like one of the little defiance disordered things where it's like when someone t I, I can be about to do something and someone tells you you can't do that. I'm like, bro, fuck you. Yeah. I'm, but I mean, like that's the thing with music. I don't want to get in a position where I need that to make money, mm -hmm. or where I'm using it to make money, where people have like some form of like weight over me that like, you have to do this. I like mm. keeping it separate. I enjoy doing that for fun whenever I feel like it. So you have to make money somehow. So what would you like to make money? doing if it was up to you bro i love my current job right now truthfully with i work for a tech startup now and i absolutely love it what's the goal of the tech startup how did you get involved why are you passionate about it what's their deal well funny, they found me on tiktok actually and they enjoyed like little videos that of course I made. they enjoyed the little videos i made mm -hmm. and i'm also now i'm doing a lot of like, the content management and i'm hoping that i'm going to be running a lot of the marketing stuff once it goes public so we're in beta testing right now but it's just a really nice job plus i'm working from home so that's also really clutch and like my whole job is I'm, I'm, I'm a great social person as i've said right so like i'm my whole job is finding other creators getting people to hop on the app i'm going out like reaching out to the public finding like, unique ways to market this to people mm. find like like getting people involved and like excited about something that's very interesting that they found you on tiktok i find like my whole life so how old are you i turned 22 in august you turned 22 okay God, I feel like an old man. Okay, so my whole life I've been thinking, especially because I have this little sister, she's like 19, she goes to MTSU now. Like I've always been afraid that at some point in my life I'm gonna get to a place where it's like, I grew up on Facebook and like I I live on Twitter now. And like Snapchat, like Snapchat, like it was really cool when I was in college and now I'm like, I don't, I don't get it anymore. I don't see the point. Instagram, it's like, I'm not hot. Like I can't sing that well. Like <laughs> my, my life is boring. So like, I'm not on there anymore. TikTok is where like I officially became like a boomer. Like I don't get it. Like I'll get on there and I'm like, so it just starts. Like I don't even like I I open up the I like open up the app and it just like begins. And I'm like, I didn't I'm not ready. And like it's too much. I don't know where the comments are. I don't know how to share anything. I don't know how to find the people. Like I don't know how TikTok works. But then one so, day, like I like I get it, but like I feel like it's too late. <laughs> And if I, if I try to get into it now, like, I, I don't know. It's just like, I have, I have, I have this stuff going on. Don't worry about it. Somebody, <laughs> somebody, one way or the other, told me about your TikTok. They were like, Aaron's like big on TikTok. And I was like, I know Aaron was like this really big social butterfly in college. I know people know him, but like, I'm sure it's not that deep. 
And then I checked it and I saw you had like a million likes and I was like, <laughs> whoa, what the f <laughs> How did your TikTok start? Well, the whole thing started because I was at Shifty's, like in Murfreesboro, and they like right before spring break, like, I was always tight with them. And like the younger guy, like Vinny was like, hey man, tell your friends about this deal. They had like a $50 box deal for spring break where you had this foam cooler and you put like, it was, you got like two handles, three fifths, shooters. Oh, was that like the first video on the your TikTok? first video on your TikTok. I've, yeah, I, I yeah, saw that. that. And that got like 8 million views. Jeez. Like 8 million views. And um, Overnight success, huh? Just yeah. blew up, just blew up first and try. Went, yeah, <laughs> well, not first I had a couple other videos that like did whatever. But then like when that one blew up, another, like, the, like the first video I posted also blew up. Mm -hmm. So those two videos blew up and I got, and then I also posted a video of in the Blackout Wednesday house and like, <laughs> Yeah. I was like showing, just showing my house and how like, kind of gross it was. Like four fraternity guys living in one house. Yeah, um, I, yeah, I remember that. That one blew up. The part two for that blew up. And then one day, I actually kind of, this is so funny. We were at like walking through Printer's Alley during COVID and mm -hmm. there was nobody there, like nobody there. And I went to this one bar. Printer's like, Alley, where is that? Explain that. It's like close to downtown. It's like in Nashville. Downtown Nashville, Printer's Alley. Okay, It's gotcha. like on 3rd Street. Okay, gotcha. Or 3rd Ave. So we're walking through Printer's Alley and like this guy who's in a, like a suit comes up he goes hey what's up guys like uh do you guys want to come in and like, like this is whiskey shot you guys want to come check it out mm. and i was like oh yeah sure and so he's like pitching this whole thing to us like trying to sell us and the bar's empty empty bar <laughs> and um he was like going through all this stuff like trying to get us he's like oh well, would you guys want to play a game get some drinks mm. i looked at him right in the face i, I said i said this sounds really fun. It's really cool. I said, I have a proposition for you. Mm -hmm. He asked me, he goes, what do you mean? And I was like, yo, so I'm like, I've got like 25,000 followers on TikTok. I was like, what if I like made a video promoting you guys and you guys like gave us some drinks, let us play this game for free. Uh -huh. He looks at me, he goes, let me get my social director. I said, okay. She comes up still, her name's Rachel, still one of my really good friends. I mm -hmm. love her, love her to death. She's hilarious. She's a great time. She's like, wow, that's like a really great idea. And mm -hmm. she goes, I would like love that. So they bring us over all these drinks. Get, like let us play this game and their drinks are amazing the games are so much fun and it's like it's like they decommission these guns mm -hmm. and you just get to shoot at these screens and it's all like pin accurate like it, they different like you can do a cop and robbers game then like these squirrel games where you're hunting squirrels like duck hunting they have like it's it's sick it's so sick. so your way in with these people was i have twenty five thousand followers on tiktok you have to show them that right oh I like, should, I yeah should, I, I said look i mean, I, I have like because at, at that time i probably had like 800,000 likes, something like that. Mm. So I was like, bro, like, I, I have a decent... And and when is this? Like, what time is it? Like, 2019, 2020? December 2020. December 2020. Shifties, 25,000 followers. No, December, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. December 2020 is when I was showing, talking to them. Gotcha. And then they're like, oh my God, like, she she loved the idea of it because like mm. she's obviously the bar's empty. Bro. Like, the bar's yeah, empty. it's like like they're not making any money anyways. You might as well you know give these kids a couple shots, see if they bring any business, right? Yeah, what's well, the thing? And like, I mean, obviously, like, I mean, like we're like good looking people. Yeah, like, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. We don't look like nobody, so we're just right. around trying to fake some stuff. So we post a video, ends up getting like 150,000 views. Blows Jeez. up. So then I'm like, oh bro, I could just do more of this. So in the bar next door, called Hideaway Janes, mm -hmm. again, like at this point in time, we're the only people on Printer's Alley. Like mm -hmm. no, like, Printer's Alley is always dead, but it's also during COVID, so like people aren't out like that. Going to Hideaway Janes, they have probably about 50 Christmas trees in the bar, all decorated differently, all doing all this different stuff. It is so cool, it's so fun yeah. And I take, I just take a quick video of it, post that one, gets 400,000 views. So now my head is like, this is Ooh. like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's all clicking. That's so crazy. I'm make all these people reach out to me like, oh, can we make a video here? Please do this for us. We want you here. We want you doing this. Like we love is, this. Is anybody offering you like money, like real money? Yeah. Yeah. You want, you want to talk about exactly? Is, is it like a small amount? Is it like I mean, it's not like a huge amount. It was like, like 50 bucks yeah, or like 50 something? Bucks, bucks. Okay, gotcha. Like, gotcha I wasn't gotcha. making anything crazy. And then like, like I was getting paid from TikTok at the time too. Oh, TikTok's paying you. I don't know how. Yeah, because there's a creator fund, which I'm off of now because like they like changed it after they first made it where like, they started like reducing your video views on the creator fund. So I kind of just stopped using it. That's so sh**. Oh, but it makes sense <laughs> though, bro. Like, I mean, it, you get, it, they obviously aren't going to put you in front of a lot of like, more people if they're paying you for every thousand views you get. That's like, that's how like mutualism works. It's like a relationship. The more you do for me, the more I do for you. I don't know. It seems like kind of backwards and it's weird that tiktok's acting like they don't have the money for it like why not why not pay the people that are doing the best more money like i thought that's, I mean, how that's like when you're doing the best yeah but like when you're starting out no. yeah right so okay, I, gotcha, I still gotcha. only had like maybe like thirty thousand followers at the time and there are people on there with like 50 million obviously they're gonna they'd rather right. invest a lot more into yeah. that making higher quality less like niche content you're no d'amelio so exactly. so <laughs> <Literally>. <laughs> so where you're at now with tiktok uh how many followers do you have right now 
think 40,000. 40,000. 40, but your right. but your videos get way more views. Oh, yeah, like, sure. Generally. So I'm, I'm curious to know, you said that your current job now with the tech startup, heading the marketing department, are you still going to be creating stuff on your own? Or are you going to be like in a more of like a bringing people on like some Team 10 type? Ah! <laughs> no, I'm not gonna be on some team test stuff. But I mean, yeah, I'm gonna continue making TikTok videos because I enjoy it. But a lot of my job now involves me creating a lot of the videos similar to what I do on TikTok. So I can almost kill two birds with one stone, sort of thing, where I'm uploading videos to this app that I'm also putting on TikTok. So I'm getting the cloud from TikTok, but I'm also gonna be getting, like, I'm able to put it on the app to make quality content for that. I've been looking into a lot of your stuff, obviously, because, like, I've been thinking about this. Like, I've been aware of your TikTok for some time. <laughs> and, but, and, like, I was just thinking, you know, I understand the value. You know, I'm not that much of a boomer. I spend tons of time on YouTube and, like, I see how, like, brand deals and stuff like this works. And then I saw you doing the thing with the startup company. And I was like, if I ask Aaron to come on this podcast, is he going to be like, not, uh, you're going to have to pay me or some shit. Like, I had no idea where you were at, like, in your life. Because I'm sure that you're aware. Like, you, you're you like a socially conscious person. Like, you're aware of, you know, I mean, you walked in, you know, you're going to places telling them, give me some shots. I'll shout you out or whatever. So you're aware of the value that your influence has. Oh, yeah. So that's why I was thinking, like, hmm, he understands, like, the value of this stuff. He's not just going to, like, post stuff willy-nilly. I was on your Instagram stalking. It's like, I was like, how often does this kid post a month? <laughs> Are there any like sponsored deals with your, with the company that you're with now? Do you still have like full creative freedom? Like they're not like yeah. down your neck, like, Hey, don't post this. Yeah. You know, what's the cool thing? So like I work for them, but I'm also still my own individual. Like there's like no exclusivity or anything like that. We're obviously, okay, gotcha. I'm not going to be getting another job. I, like you're not going to, I'm not going to be out here promoting another tech company or anything crazy like that. Dude, wh wh when I but, first reached out to you, I was honestly like, do you have like a manager? Like a talent manager? Like, do I need to reach out? Because like, because like I see these views, like I see the views, I see the likes and stuff. I'm like, is Aaron like a real influencer? Like, am I going to see hashtag ads on like any of these posts? But then I reached out to you on Snapchat and literally within minutes, you're like, yeah, dude, love to come on the podcast. And I was like, oh, he's not that busy. <laughs> no, I'm totally busy. But I just like, I mean, I, I'm definitely pretty, like, I'm, yeah, I'm busy. But. Well, you have something to do after this and you have something to do before it. Like I had to be here right now at this time to yeah, do this. Yeah, literally. I, like, yeah, I wanted to make sure I blocked out. Because this, uh, this is fine. I'm really fine. Yeah, it's, it's cool. It's cool to just, before, like, it's just cool to just catch up, just talk. With this podcast, ideally, I want like, I want sponsors or I want somebody to buy the show. I want Spotify to reach out and be like, hey, we don't want you anywhere else. We'll pay you to do that full time. Yeah. That's my goal. What is your goal? What do you want to do? Truthfully, I don't know. Um, my goal at the end of the day is like to be happy with wherever I am. I want to be happy with myself. I want to love my own life. Right now, my happiness is I mean, working with New Zip, doing stuff with like TikTok, just kind of hanging out, going to parties. Obviously, as I get older, it's going to change. So my goals are going to change. I just want to, in every aspect of my life, be enjoying every minute of it. Just having fun. Yeah, I'm just, just having, having a good time. Like, I mean, life's too short not to really kind of chase your own happiness. And the minute things start becoming something that make me not happy, I don't want to do it anymore. I care about like my own well-being way too much to put things that don't matter that I can easily be replaced with first. I think about that a lot. That it it sounds like you're kind of like on the same wavelength where you're like, okay, I have my basic necessities figured out. Like I'm not like stressed about money and stuff. So at this point I just want to do like what makes me happy, enjoy time with the people that like I love and stuff like that. I think that's where everybody should try to get. I am, I'm glad that there are people like you and people like me that can, I, I spend 10, 15, 20 hours a week doing this. I'm not even getting paid for it. Yeah. Because I just like doing it. I love it. Now, I'd like to get paid. <laughs> exactly. Like, eventually. But, you know, that would just be a symptom of my hard work. It wouldn't actually be, like, the whole reason I'm doing it. Because if this show never gets picked up, I'm still going to be doing this shit for the rest of my life. Because you're enjoying it. And, and I think you would keep making TikToks and you'd keep posting on Snapchat and you would, you like, regardless, you'd keep going to these places in Nashville and talking about how cool the scenery is, regardless of if you thought someone was going to pay you. Because oh, you just sure. enjoy it. Well, that's the thing. It's like, at the end of the day, I love, like, memories. Like, one thing me and Lydia always were so close with was, like, for memories. Mm -hmm. And that's how we always, like, yeah, like, we take videos of everything. We love, like, getting these things. And, go, and like, the Snapchat feature where you can go through and see, like, your one year ago today, like, five yeah. years ago today. That's my favorite thing in the you world. You love those. I literally, and, like, I take a lot of videos. And mm -hmm. I'll be like, I'll see you next year. Like, that's, like, a fun <laughs> thing for me. Yeah. Like, I just save them my memories. I just want to see them next year. Like, I love shit like that. Like, I love just being able to go back and look at, like, what I was doing one year ago today. And I'm just thinking even, like, 
10 years from now, I'm sitting, I'm chilling with my kids. You know how cool people will show you? My, I, I'm obviously not going to show like a five year old. Like, oh, here's, here's your daddy pissed drunk. Yeah, this is Blackout like, Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> but like, the cool thing is, like, when my kids are getting for college, it'll mm. be so nice. You're going to be like, oh my God, like, here are some of my college experiences. Dude, that's And here's, awesome. like, I have it all documented. That's literally like, I how have, like my yes. college glow up like all completely <laughs> documented from it's all me posting on my Snapchat story saying I hate it here I want to go home mm. me taking like videos in my first like in my first semester classes where all the kids smelled weird had pink hair <laughs> looked like and, like looked like they ate glue bro like I, I, I want to be like look I hated this school when I first got here and here's how in like two and a half years it became I, I chose I'm moving here I never want to go back home. Yeah, having the time of your life. Exactly, like, you know, and that's like, well, I want my kids to be able to do that. I, I don't want my kids to be dependent on me. Like that is so sweet. You know what I mean? Like, I it, it's it's nice to know that, like, if nothing else, you have your videos. I have the podcast. I was literally talking about that like a couple shows ago, a couple episodes ago. I was like, if nothing else comes from this, like at least I was doing it. It's recorded these conversations, like what we have, like what we're doing right now today, like this in your house. It's gonna live somewhere forever. Oh, for sure. You'll, you'll always be able to look back on it and be like, that's where I was at that time. That's what we were talking about. Like, that's super cool to me. Oh, bro, this is a fantastic song. I, I, I appreciate you reaching out. I, I truly was honored to be on here. I was like, oh, bro, thank you. Um, <laughs> Instagram's Aaron Fowler with two R's. TikTok's A squared. I don't know. I don't really have anything else to say. Like, I, I feel like we hit a lot of bases there. At some point, someday in the future, one day, um, I'll have Aaron back on. Oh, for sure. And we'll see where he's at, where his company's at, where New Zip's at, if Spotify bought my show or not. We'll see. We'll catch up. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. Thank you. Haters looking at me crazy. Cause I'm driving around Miss Daisy. And in college, I was lazy. You've been very defensive lately. But they were coming for my baby. Well, the podcast looking tasty and we getting money lately. Sorry. I just found my passion, man. What's happening? I've been going up. They've been throwing up. Once they see the numbers blowing, blowing up. up. I've been showing up like Monday, Monday Wednesday, Wednesday, Friday. My way. Not the Burger King, but y'all a side plate. Looking at me sideways. Y'all can hit the highway. Spotify and Apple hear me anywhere in the tri-state. I am like a fly plane, I will never die, man They say I'm just rambling, but I'm just playing my strength Oh lord Rapping to me so elementary I'm going harder than sedimentary I'm doing this cause it was meant to be I'm not petty but someone tempted me Might clap back if someone sent for me I'd do this without a dollar or cent for me I won't stop and I don't bend the knee